Mitsu is one of the big heroes for him. So we'll see how active he can be because I think I think Mushi and Baboka both have to have some pretty good games to actually make sure that this Timber is fully out of it. Because the other three heroes, they don't like playing versus Timbersoft. They don't do anything. No, not at all. We are definitely having the potential this game to become borderline unkillable. We'll see if he gets there and see if Asta do have an idea or ways to, to, to deal with the Timbersaw, which on paper just looks to be a very strong pick this game. That's the that's the pugna, right? That ma that that's... huge magic. We'll see things you go oh. Asta's way. We saw Chaos, they identified the lanes. They realized it's an aggro, but they don't want their slot to be playing into a coddle aggressive. That sounds pretty bad, so sending sending him up toward top, and there he's going to be stacking Dabo. He needs clockwork. So yeah. He can at least cog the waves and... All right, let's see what he can do. I mean, clockwork is out, because that's a hero we're not we're not seeing a lot of people touch upon. Really. No. No, it's not not a hero, especially sort of in the core position. So we'll see what Tavo is able to do. He did have quite a big impact last game on the Brew. We'll see what he can do the clock this time around. As King RD has been found out. Fenrir and Baboka were waiting for him to take the walk down towards the bottom lane. They'll cut off his path and cut off his yep. life. So that's first blood for Ast. And Tavo, he did get the rocket level one. I saw he used the chat wheel and it said, did someone tell me someone saw that? He did get the last hit with the... Oh, Gotta give nice. him a little bit of... Give him a, give him a bit of credit for that one. Yeah. So level one, he can get lots of CS actually. 35 yeah. mana, that was the change that happened of course. Oh in the yeah, match. much easier to spam for the so range you can and just, stuff. You, have like, you always will have mana to be able to throw out those rocket players. Running across here, just seeing what sort of vision who, who we can see sort of hiding around in the trees. Mid lane, obviously, early levels, Mushi playing very aggressively, keeping Weeha low. It's going to force out the salve on the timber already with the, the sort of constant harassment uh, harassment Mushi is putting in on this mid lane. Eight for three against the four for zero. But again, is this sort of expected early levels, the pugnant as well, or is it sort of all levels? This is just a lane where we're just going to see Mushi be ahead. Yep, Mushi's just going to be. Weeha, once you can, now he's, I think he's three, right? Did he get three yet? So yeah. once you have two in reactive, now you can farm, but pugnant will. And you can put pressure. The thing is that you can even threaten kills at six as a Pugna. And you'll get more denies every single time because crap and he has to rely on getting used for death to get lasted then makes a little bit more. Mushi also was this like for his team the star of the game. Yeah, it was a solid performance in that middle lane and, and this time around he's he's got the hero matchup favoring him as well, which he yeah. I guess you he obviously had to had the, the backup at the start of the, the lane in game one. Which did allow him to have that slight edge. His bottom lane, Tarvo falling pretty low. We'll be able to get the rocket. Turn the strike down to XXS. But they won't quite fall. Top lane. Misery being turned upon as Baboka slows him down with the rock and claims a kill up top. HFN does pounce forward onto Baboka, but there is not the damage to take down the Earth Spirit. So Baboka will survive. That's to get in their second kill on the board. Ooh, and already two minutes in. It's looking a much more hotter for them. Tarvo getting clipped by the horses. Not enough to kill him, but enough to keep him pressured behind that tower. Has to be careful. Only down to one shared tango on the clockwork. So Tarvo's going to take quite a bit of time to regen. Top lane HFN pounces back in time to get him back to safety. Tarvo just blind dodged the blast in the trees. Oh, again, the second and he one. Lived, he lived. He had like 90 HP and it just missed him. He yeah. would have died absolutely blessed. Because at least he does have the three mangoes. So that's going to be a bit of passive regen that's going to help him sort of stick around. Yeah. And as we say, you know, he can sit back, pop out the rocket he's, flare to get CS. He's getting more last hits than Siler. Yeah. Right. The lone druid up top, he's only got seven. Lost 12 and 8. 8 denies on HFN doing a fantastic job first, with the help, of course, from it. Damn signal. Only 7 last. That's it with the bear. Yeah, I'm with Baboka sitting by his side. It's yeah, not he's like he's been entirely left alone. He has had the Earth Spirit in this lane. A little bit, yeah. Baboka's been moving. One lane, actually, they see an opportunity to find Fenrir. TP in from Misery, that's going to land them the kill on Chaos. Baboka tried to roll forward. I'll turn towards Misery, see if they can run this down. XXS and Baboka should have the damage to do so. Misery trying to knight oh, to neutrals. Is he going to be able to do so? The stun does hit them all, but Misery <laughs> will still fall. XXS not messing about there as he'll throw out the storm hammer to secure that kill. I was about to say, if that stun just secures the neutrals to deny him, that would have been pretty clutch. Tavo ditched him really early. I did, he was he out still had it. battery assault active too, and he just ran away to the creep wave. That was a little weird. Must have been like them just saying, I'll, I'll die, whatever. Like Misery probably just made the call. It looked a little weird the way Tabo backed away. Get all these denies up top though. Mid lane. Even though Wehara is having the uh, tougher time, it's not too far behind the, uh, the farmer Mushi. 28 for 5 it's... against the 20 for 2. It's, I guess this is sort of the difference you'd expect. It's the once the level, like the levels really start to get there. Mushi's nearly level six. We had just hit five. He has a bit of creeps, of course, still here, but 
when Mushi six, Weha has to be incredibly careful. That's why he get, went for the one point in that uh, timber chain. The uh, HFN up top lane build, of course, going for the, the Almidas on the slot. And we'll see where he does go after that. He's got a bit of a collection of items queued up. Shadow amulets, blink daggers. You feel like the one we have seen the Slark, one of the popular ones has been the Midas into Blink. That's when he was like, when he was really yeah. getting really People popular People were saying, again. hey, we can still play this hero. It went yeah. back to, it, like, it did like a full swing. It was originally Blink and then it went to Shadow Blade and then we went... Uh, rune control, it's actually been, Chaos has been paying a lot of attention to those runes because they saw that Mushi had a bottle. So I actually saw the Disrupted go bottom, I believe, and kill it, I want to say. Yeah. And then I think Weha grabbed the one. They've been doing a good job of making sure that they can keep the, we got keep mid. the runes. Cold. They're going to try and have a go onto Weha here. Bit of a, I, don't know, I think a misplay there for Mushi is he did decrepify Baboka rather than Weha. And uh, that's, that's going to be a dead Mushi. The wraparound from Misery and King RD comes into play. And hey, I can only imagine. He, I mean, even though if he, even if he did decrepify the sim, I don't think he would have killed him anyway. But, but even uh, then, he he just like he didn't press the rest of the spells. He didn't press the life train. He could have just because no, he, didn't he have a had all. They didn't have a disable. For I him. don't know. Someone check that man's keyboard. That's that's a little, that's a that, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. He pressed it like after after like five seconds of him getting hit by a couple extra yeah, things in the rotation. He, he pressed all the wrong buttons and all the wrong orders. So that's uh, that's gonna be a dead Mushi. He's gonna CP back to the lane. He's still farming really well. Yeah, but yeah. That's just. I mean, now Timber is actually tied with him. That was a rotation to help out Weeha. Had to fix up the casual cloak, and that guy said casually is going to go straight for the hook first against all this magical. Making it a lot harder to kill. Another attempt, but as you say, with the point in Timber Chain, it's hard for, for these two heroes really to kill him, unless uh, Weeha gets too over aggressive and tries for a play onto Mushi himself. Which but, he uh, never really has to. No, he's playing uh, safe. It's going to be pushed into him the whole time, and yeah. then he can just stand on the creep and tank, get that reactive gong for himself. So now immediately, instead of going for mid, Mushi's like, we're going to go top. We have Tyler up top with the bear. We have a catapult wave too, oh, so let's just get this past there, There's obviously not much that HFN as a level 5 slot can do to slow down any sort of push like this on his own. But they're going to bring more. They're going to try to slow it down as best as possible. Silar, I believe he's got the, he's got the Midas out onto him. Yes, it's on the bear. So nice Midas good to go. Even though he wasn't getting the most last hits. Seven minutes, he's got it. Decent timing, bottom lane, TP in for Darvo, he's going to get the cogs down onto XXS, XXS does have the god string, but turning towards Darvo, nearly kills off the clock. Don't look to try and dive in, he has got the stun up in a second, but the glint back from King Ardy will peel the span away from Tarbo. He still has to be a little careful that he doesn't get hit by the stun, he's still standing pretty close by. And Asta able to pressure on, fortification comes out, same time Chaos, they're pushing on the tier yeah. 1 tower mid, so despite this was a lane against the Pugna, we are, he's actually doing more damage to tier 1 mid than the Pugna was able to do to his, as his tower still pretty much remains intact. He's nearly taken the tier 1 tower from Mushi. Mushi's going to have something to say about that, though, as he comes into the mid lane. The Crepify attempt is there. Timber Chain keeps Weha at a distance. Misery and King RD around as well in case Mushi gets too aggressive. That is the one thing where I thought they'd actually rotate one of the supports, that, like the Coddle in particular. I thought he'd be there to soak the experience and just to stop the pressure. Because if you move mid versus a hero like Timber, DK, a lot of the Death Prophet, whatever, they're going to pressure yeah. your tower. They're going to take it. We are ready to get aggressive. Pops the Sauron, goes to the Shackle, Monster Provoker, Thunderstrike's there as well. He is getting sucked up by Mushi, but he's able to keep the distance again with the Timber Chain. We are fine. They won't kill Provoker, but they won't lose the life of the... Ooh, Ooh he tries for Provoker, but didn't quite have the cast range with the Shackle. Not quite killing the Timber. Space continues to be there on the top lane, though, for Sylar. And uh, we've got to know as well, this Sven, XXS, he's having a very good time this game too. He's nearly got the Vlads done at uh, about nine minutes in on top of the treads. And as you can see, 56-11, he, like Mushi, is, is pretty much getting free farm. Yeah, I mean, the three cores, the Sloan Druid was yeah. being slowed down top, but he caught up, got a Midas, now he's ahead. So yeah, the three cores having excellent time, the support's a bit more slowed down. But that's a great that's great for Astro because now what happens is when you have a Pugna and you have a little bit of a lead starting, now you go you take the last tier one. You take the last two tier ones and then your map opens up a lot. You can put pressure on the enemy quite hard. And just keep tabs of where the Slark is is most. Cameron, just have to be a little careful how close he gets. So we are definitely has kill potential with the amount of mana that he has. Bottom lane, we're all four from Baboka was hunting. Tava. Tava keep distance. Tava now level six as well, so can't look for the hookshot plays. But they'll let this tower go. Now, there's no TPs coming in. Asta able to claim the bottom tier one tower. More money for the boys. Who Tavo is really going to be going? Of course, like the Sven, you know, right? And the Lone Lone is probably going to have a quelling. The Coddle can blinding light and push you off of your cogs. The Earth Spirit can kick you out and roll away. So 
The targets are pretty I mean, limited you, for Tavo. You're probably just going to try and mess with Mushi, right? Yeah. yeah. He has to just you want to get on top of the Pugnas. Pugnas. Yeah. But then it's same thing. He can blinding light you out of where the Pugna is. It's not just him saving himself. So I feel like it is going to be a pretty tough game for this Clockwork to have a big impact. Because I think at some point, Aster's just going to group and go. They've got Pugna, they've got Sven with the Vlads, and they've got a lone. They've got this lineup that can actually just completely snowball down lanes. Where Nature's Prophet and Slark are probably gonna have to come in play and just get that side, you know, the side pushing coming out to make sure that Aster can't actually group up and go. Yeah, that's got an Invis rune. Okay. But the burst combo probably not enough to kill Scylla. Sentry as well. Oh, yeah, they see it. Hello. Ah, took the creep. But which one did? Did Weehaw get it or did Tavo get it with the rocket flare? They Weehaw. were both going for it. I think Weehaw <laughs> I think yeah. did, yeah. Came in at similar time. And how are we seeing HFN doing treads on top of the Midas? He's also in a pretty happy place at the moment. Yep. That top lane slot. Uh, it's, yeah, just Tavo's farm really that's falling behind. He yep. needs to sort of find some action really to catch back up mid lane. They get the stun off onto Timbersaw. Static Storm, Storm is going to get dropped down, holding back. As to for now, Weeha is actually turning back into it. The Chakram and the, the Timber Chain. He brings Mushi down very low. Tavo comes in with the TP, has the battery assault on top of Mushi. Mushi dies. The Boca rolls back down to join the rest of the team and keep himself away from Weeha. They have got the glimpse, dragging Boca back up towards Weeha. That might actually kill Weeha off. We are turning kill neutral. We'll be there to deny Baboka. But uh, yeah, Weehaw's going to say, oh, well, watch out with those glimpses, Mr. King RD. It nearly got him killed there. Bringing the uh, spirit back to the land and just keep that magnetized going. But Weehaw will survive just two for one. Tavo gets a great actual double cogs on people there. So that's one situation yeah. where he can. Yeah, again, the two cogs. Before Mushi, before Mushi gets the first. Of course, you know, you're playing Pugna versus a cogs. Oh, yeah. You have to get first item. Absolutely right. It does. Just what we oh, recipe away is an expensive recipe. So we need a bit of time to finish that one off. They hold the tower, though. That's that's pretty ah, significant. And it, it, it's, as you say, as well, things happening around the map. Space is there for HFN. And also you have Misery. He's able to put this split push pressure on. And on his own, he's taking the tier one tower top. It'll probably die for this, as XX says, and Ferro looking for it. Actually, with the TP out. Hey, no, he's not dying. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's not further control. He gets out of that. So that's the tier one tower and a free escape for Misery. He's going to be very happy with that play. They're splitting them up across the map, as to, despite having the slightly better time at the beginning with the farm of the course. Chaos, we're starting to see glimpses of those plays that got them so far ahead in game one. And, and like I was, I was mentioning in the beginning, right, with the Slark pick and the Timber, we see what is HFN doing? Weeha is being this distraction. Yeah. He's making a oh, lot yeah. of attention come to him while HFN's just... He's just in another he's game. He's just jungling, farming himself. Yeah. 88 last hits at 12 minutes yeah. with the Midas. Zero, zero, zero. That's how he likes to see on the KDA. He wants, it. he wants to be out of the game, playing his own time. That's, that's how all the Slark is enabled to hit that point where he is at his strength. Yeah. It's still a 2k gold lead for Aster. They're still they're still farming quite heavily themselves. And some move for Midas. He'll find himself now. Oh, maybe he wants to be bigger. And, take it is, that. and it is getting that weird, like 12 minutes. So Aster, they do have some team fight. Some pretty strong team fight with the Will-O-Wisp as well as that Magnetize, which we did see kind of put in. But now they do have it again if they want to go set up for tower. But right now, they're actually not playing in lanes. I see Fenrir is pushing out top, but Sven's jungling, Pugna's jungling, Lone Jones jungling. jungling, and Earth Spirit's just showing mid, so they're not actually pushing their lanes oh, out properly. And, and chaos, chaos is in every single lane. Yeah, they, they push like every this, single lane out. This is not the play here for Mass. They should definitely be in their lanes a bit more because they're just giving free space right now. Oh. To... Misery has been found, and this time he's not getting out of the both room with the TP. It's himself an X accessible kind of lane. We are. It's got a complete pipe, so now it's harder and harder for Aster to make the plays happen. If We is going to be there, he's going to be able to keep his team alive against the magical burst. I'll say this Pugna and Earth Spirit in the team fights. Did Misery just TP there? I think he did, right? He did just he TP. He just TP'd to, that point. to try to put yeah. a ward. Yeah, so like even then it's like, alright, I you got the you got the like five fury on. But the lanes, look at this, like Weehaw's already setting up now bottom and they still have HFN playing his own game. Oh. Now they're starting to react. See what we've got here from Tavo, straight in onto Mushi. The Will O Wisp will be popped down. Tavo, he's gonna try and keep himself on top of Mushi. The ward dropped. Tarv has to be a little careful how he does continue and may have dove a little too deep. We'll see if the team can help him out. Weeha's going to come in and pop the pipe. That the will pipe. allow Tarv to get the space to get out of there. So nice play from Weeha. Knows that he can afford to go in on the front lines. In fact, he's just going to start hitting the tower right in front of them. He knows with the magnetize expended, the Willow is gone. There's not really much that Asta can do to hold him off. He's straight in with the Chakram on top of Baboka. Baboka will look to kick him away, but Weeha will be quick to grab himself back close with Timber Jack. I think that's twice I've seen that happen where he kicks him away and then just gets <laughs> Timber Chain right oh. back on top of him. Let's get a little glimpse onto Mushi. Does have the four stuff. Weeha, he's out of mana. 
Mango in his backpack, unfortunately, in the Soul Ring, still on cooldown, so won't be able to chase any further. But we're already starting to see that Asta, despite having the lead in Spawn there, they're not really kitted out to, to deal with this point again, where Weeha has a pipe of insight. They don't have damage to hold them back and stop these pushes. They're taking towers away from them. It looks like they were waiting for the first crucial item, Blink Dagger Sven. Second crucial item is going to be that Radiant Stone yeah. Druid before they try to actually group together. That okay. seems like it's the, the big And it ultimate. is getting close for some. Yeah, because they didn't even, they didn't even, like the Sven didn't even care to show up on them. They showed the other three heroes and these two just kept jungle. These two were like, nope, we know what we need to get. We know what we want to get, at least in this game. But HFN too. He didn't show up. Level no, 13. Not. He's just level. It's level 13. Slark. He's he's having a great time. He he's actually is. just farming. This slark is going to be scary. He's going for the ash into diffusal blade as well. The uh, slark. So oh, I imagine once the diffusal's there, he's going to get very aggressive with the rest of the team. Hofemre getting a hook shot to the face from Tavo behind the tier two tower. Nature's wrath nice. bounces out from misery, and that's a dead keeper of the light. The push continues from Chaos. They know that this is a point where Asta don't seem to want to fight, and they're doing their best to abuse that as much as they can. But now they're trying to hunt for HP. They get the silence to stun follow-up. Do, do they, have enough? they have the damage, though? They I don't. don't think they do. Shadow Dance is going to be popped, and now HFN's ready to turn. The TPs have come in. He'll back himself away. Mushi is going to be there, wrapping around for the side. He has got the suck out. The blast isn't enough to kill him. It's not. The glimpse is there to pull Mushi away from HFN. So HFN can retreat, keep himself out of vision, and get the Shadow Dance heal pumping back up. They'll look towards an easier target. King RD will be the one to suffer as has to close the gap on the Disruptor. But they get HFN out of there. Bottom lane, of course, Tier 2 Towers taken. We are starting to toy around on the high ground of Asta's base. As Asta, she's in. find a target mid. TP from We Are is coming through. Misery will turn, get some treants out of there, but he does fall. The magnetizing the life drain enough to finish him off, but Mushi's got to be careful. He's backing away, but Boca will roll forward in an attempt to hold We Are back from the Pugna. Now we'll allow the HFN. space for We Are to get out, but that's where the Pugna to get out. And indeed, HFN, he's on top of Mushi. Mushi has got the self to crepify, but one more hit from HFN will do it as the decrepify ends. They get a big kill there for HFN, and now they'll look towards the bear as well. Tavo and Weeha on top of it. Easy 300 gold for them, and HFN, he wasn't even quite done in the middle lane. He also finishes off Baboka. Yeah, that's so... He just, like, ran away from the fight, got full health, found a DD bottom, and then just gets a oh full wrap around. And those kills as well. Look, he just had a Yasha. Now he's a couple of hundred gold away from having a full defusal on this Jeez. slug. He is going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with. Yeah, and that looked like a pretty cool move from Master Root, right? The way they smoked all the way across the map to try to find HFN, but then as soon as they don't find him, they're like kind of running around, kind of lost. They find a support, which is cool, but that's not the target they're looking for when not they're that team. All. They need to get the core there. And they've got to do something as a team now, Asta. They try and jump forward onto HFN. Immediate reaction there with a the Shadow Dance. He plays it safe, gets out. That's mm. the Diffusal Blade done, 17 minutes in. They've got the Radiance now on Silo. Okay. So this is what you say they were waiting for. This is the point where we have to see Asta at least try and, and take the initiative themselves and go for some sort of play. HFN on the low ground, they didn't quite see him though, just outside of vision. Would have time. been a sweet catch to find, but they didn't see him quite in the location. He got a full mech now completed for Weeha, just making sure that he has everything to keep the team alive. He's going for those Greaves, of course, just a recipe away from having that. So once the Greaves are there, as well as the Pipe of Insight, suddenly saw this magical damage, this burst from the Pugna and the Earth Spirit. It's going to be entirely negated, and all of damage relies on sort of the Sven and the Lone Druid to find an opportunity to jump in. XXS disruptor. has got the bling. He's going to look towards him, and they will kill him. He nearly has to walk away. I think they go high ground. I think you've, th I think you've threatened high ground, Aster. You've got, you've got to try and pull Chaos back. Because that, that's what's actually of... reacting instead of trying All to force right. them back. Let's see if they can even hold the tier two top. They come in on top lane. We are. I've already got too much to be scared about. He knows that as well. He's hanging around just outside the nose of Sylar. HFN tries to go for Mushi. Mushi actually turns with the life drain. He has Baboka here as well. They get the silence on top of HFN. They, the they do have the Willow Wisp. He does not have Shadow Dance available. He does now. He's back up. Just in time and available to allow him to bounce up to the high ground. Get away from the Will of the Wisp. Asta unable to find any sort of action. In fact, they might get themselves caught in a bit of action that Chaos want to find. As the TP in from Misery grants the vision onto XXS, allowing them to drag him back with the glimpse into the Static Storm. Chaos continuing to outplay Asta. That's the that's the risk that happens, right? When you start TPing two heroes away and the other heroes don't have TP, and Chaos identifies that, oh, they're, they're gonna, gonna surround you. you. They're gonna they're... chase you. And they've got so much chase as well as we saw, just giving the vision for these glimpses. It's, it's, they're very hard fights to run away from. Weeha, he's ready to try and dive behind the tier two tower. HFN's the there glimpse. with the wraparound, again, being able to peel Sylar away from the rest of his team as he needs help and he needs it now. Femra is coming across, TP's are coming into the tier two tower. He's pretty tanky on the Lone Druid, will survive for now as he gets himself back out of there and 
Chaos. They will respect these mass TPs coming in from Aster. They know the Sven's back up in five seconds. They're not going to mess around with them anymore. Yeah, go back to farm those side lanes, right? You've already, you've already just like like screwed up Aster's plan that they wanted to do there. I really do think Aster could have... They ideally wanted to try to force something there, force a reaction when they were all... All of them grouped up bottom with this timing window that they got, as we were mentioning. But no, they back up and they lose quite a bit. They do indeed. Smoke again. The Guardians as well being picked up by Chaos. They had the Spirit Vessel on Tavo. And uh, Misery, I believe, yeah, pretty much the, yeah, the full Vlad's done. So these extra auras, these extra abilities to keep this Lark safe, jump forward. Do manage to catch out the clock, Tavo. He's gonna try for the hook shot. We'll be able to make it over to the neutrals and with the instant TP out, he's gonna make it away. Tavo just escapes underneath the noses of the full five-man lineup of Asta. He's back to base, he's back to safety. Very nicely done. And look, look at Misery, what he's doing right now. He's catching the creep wave actually with the Treant. He's pulling the whole mid wave. Oh no, where's the push then? Do they do they have creeps? Do they still? have anything? They still they have got one, one range, range creep. creep. He's ready to go. He's ready to remove that back door protection. So they've got the lanes in better position this time, and now they're just gonna force yeah. it. So I thought I thought this is what they were gonna do bottom, but now lane's better spot. They're trying really hard here to look forward here for the racks. I mean we are gonna be quite a hard sort of frontline force to break through with the greaves complete on top of the pipe. The the, the treant died though, so the creep reinforcement does come in. So back door isn't enabled. But Silent Bear has dropped a little bit low. Yeah, they're scared to go hard round. Unless they can find some sort of jump, some sort of kill. Trying to lead in onto the live with the live train onto Weeha. So it's hard to, to melt through this timber saw. Top lane now reaction will come out. As HFM was pushing onto the tier two. Now so they know. TP back. They're gonna head in straight away, looking for some action onto Silent. The bear trapped up by the cock. The Will O Wisp is down onto four of them. XXS moving in with the God Strength, trying to come through Weeha, but he has to turn for an easier target. Looks towards Misery, but he's not even gonna get him. As HFN's there with the backup, jumps in onto XXS. XXS cut down. Weeha's gonna move in towards Fenrir in the trees. Chakram out upon him. Cold trying to escape. A Boker as well. The two supports ripped apart. As Earth Spirit dies, Weeha continued to follow, allowing them the vision to bring back Silent with the glimpse. He's stuck in the kinetic field. Weeha continues to chase for the easier kills. Looks for Fenrir. The vision's there for the Nature's Wrath to bounce through. Kill off a third. HFN, can you get the pounce onto Sylar? Yes, he can. Locks him down with the root. A little low on Chaos there. To be careful about how they poke on Sylar. We are, though, he's full health and he's ready to jump straight in. He's getting rooted up, but there are some of them once more. HFN jumps forward onto Sylar. That's four dying on Asta. Nobody falls on Chaos. And it's just beginning to just feel like a bit of a repeat of game one. Absolutely. Aster, they know how to farm, they know how to get these items, but then it seems like they just don't know what to do after that. And Chaos, they've got all the answers. They're playing perfect. Yeah, they see, I mean, they seem so disconnected, right? It seemed like some people wanted to stay, some people wanted to go. They end up canceling their TPs, but Chaos is like, we got them with their pants on. They don't want to try yeah. to take this fight. Even though the Willow Wisp cast is on three, I think the Magnetize hit three as well. It looked pretty okay, but... No, Chaos just are able to weave in and out of the fights constantly with this Slark and pick up those stacks. And now, I would think it would be Aster getting the Roche, but now with Chaos getting the Roche on this lineup, with the Slark who is already 4 0 3, 191 last hits, I am, yeah, got, super concerned for Aster absolutely. now. Absolutely, I don't know what Aster doing in a situation like this. Sure, they're only 3k behind, but it's just the fact that they've just not been able to get anything going in their favor. No, and they were losing fights when they were 3k ahead. And also 3k experience ahead. Now it's it's an 8k experience lead for Chaos. Top tier 2. It's going to be pressured by Chaos. Straight up to there. We'll be able to easily take this objective. Full BKB on the way up for HFN as well. Of course, that Aegis he's holding on to. They don't have a bear right now. 50 seconds. That was the resummon from the last fight. Comes Jump. forward. Tavo, he's going to lead straight in. Does get silenced and stunned by the Sven. Static Storm's going to be dropped down in King RD to try and help Tavo out, get in the space to escape. Does continue to get dragged in by the Will O Wisp, but XXS just doesn't have the damage to go for him. Pounce forward from HFN, holding down the Sven. XXS tries to turn, but the BKB comes out from HFN. He hits forward onto XXS. The Sven there for 45 seconds, and the rest of Asta having to run back to the high ground. Back into the base. Space is there for Chaos to finish the tier two tower mid. And again, objectives continuing to easily fall to the, yeah. the hands and the push of Chaos. And Asta struggling to do do much at all about every single move that Chaos makes. It just seems yeah. to be a move ahead of them. I know this has become like more of the staple Timbersaw build, especially with like Weeha doing it, but I I absolutely love this build. The Greaves pipe just build. Just unkillable. Yeah, the pipe in the early game made such a big difference when they were making these plays to make space for HFN. Now the Greaves time in time after time, he's just like dropping low and the regen kicks in. It, it just seems so damn useful for the team. And on the opposing side, who's actually that carrier? They don't have that. 
They don't. They have He's a. Gonna build any sort they of have bonus. a Vlads. It's the Sven with the Vlads, and that's yeah. that's about it. Every on the other side, it's chaos with a lot more advantage. Than that, oh, they do burst. HFN did get a little greedy. Was looking for the car there. That's the Aegis gone. Can they kill him a second time? They get the roll onto him straight away. The army now to chase stun him up. Two hookshot comes every time, and that's going to buy the chance for HFN to pop the shadow dance and get out of there. He'll pounce away. He'll be able to survive. He'll be bailed out this time by his teammates. As Asta can't quite hold him down a second time. He wants He's to still go back actually in. watching from the side. He's seeing if there's a target here and he'll find it. And Baboka jumps for it, committing with the BKB. Baboka will fall. In chaos, they're ready to go for more. Glimpse back onto Sila. He's trapped in the static storm. HFN turns his attention towards the Lone Druid as Sila cannot escape. The pounce holding him in place. The Lone Druid will fall two dead on Asta. As we are toys with them, incredibly low HP on the Timber, but he knows that he just can't die at this point. There's a full S and Y coming out to HFN. They're onto the high ground. The tier three starting to fall, and it feels like Asta's already left the game. Yeah, it's it's really starting to feel like that. I mean, Chaos is actually taking these fights really well. Yeah. They're playing the fights incredibly nice. The way HFN reset there, hides behind the tree. Tabo even with the little save. Every tiny little thing coming Tabo's to play. just straining. He's able to trap up XXS, push Mushi back into the hands of HFN, and Weeha Mushi burst down. No buyback available on the Pugna. Misery picks up a Meteor Hammer when he goes back to base. Drops it down. That rack should be complete as HFN also has 18 stacks plus 10 permanent. So quite a lot of agi for him for that siege. And look at that. You have an HS Prophet on your team. All the side lanes are pushed. You can... He said, yeah. Feels like Aster's out of it. Really, really does. It's going to have to be back to the drawing board. It feels for Aster. In terms of their drafts and play, it just hasn't been enough to cut it. And Chaos, what a day for them. They have brought some beautiful Dota. Some fantastic drafts and play, bringing the slot back in, and it looks hot as ever from HFN. None of the cores have died so far on the side. I don't think they will this game. The Clockwork at 309, Slark 605, Timbersoft 409. Great plays from the three. I mean, the support play has been great. They've died a couple times, and that's that's been kind of like their job misery, putting down these like, deep wards when he's been TPing in and dying. But yeah, the three cores on the side of Chaos have been playing phenomenal. Just like the weaving in and out of the fights, the presets have been. Yeah, it was great. Great to watch. And Aster just, again, felt like they had a game plan. Things just completely crumbled again. Just like the last Gaia's top shrine is under attack. It just feels like an incredibly disjointed team. Yeah. So that's... It seemed like they team had a... Lead, two they sets of racks. They seemed like they had a, a timing, too, that they, they got all the things together, and then Chaos was doing... Chaos was doing a good split push, and yeah, Aster had to respond. Oh, look at the bear outside of the base. That's another 300 gold going the way of Tavo. HFN no already resuming. jumping in, looking towards XXS. XXS has to run his way back to base. Femre will be left behind. 40 seconds, no bear. And Smoke, they've got the, all three creep waves again pushing in. Incoming. Misery. He knows Dyer's he can just do this. What are they going to do to stop it? They're going to try. And they lead in with the stun onto Misery, but Misery forced away. More than fine. The racks will be kept alive for now. Life Drain's going to be there in an attempt to keep Baboka safe. But again, the glimpse from King RD bringing Baboka into position where his team can no longer save him. Look at the... They don't take damage because of this pipe. It's just the itemization, the pipe plus the Guardian Greaves, even though there is that lots of magic damage that could be coming out. It's just all negated. And Right. Absolutely ideal from Weeha. Chaos is looking brilliant today in this first day of you know, someone kind of eats it. So they want misery pretty bad, but... Oh, oh, my God. Just coming straight in HFN as well, ready to jump forward. That's Mushi dead inside the static storm. No buyback on the Pugna. Again, with these glimpses, King RD pulling them apart. They've got GG, it's got it all over. It was over about 10 minutes ago. This series, 2-0 to Chaos Esports Club, and what a day for them as a whole. As this team has turned up, they're ready to play. There's always something about these boys at ESL events, and it looks like this one's not going to be any sort of exception. They yep. turn up, and they, they, well, this series in particular, they just bought a level of Dota that Asta, they couldn't even see. They were so no. far behind. No, they, I, I actually, the timber, the whole timber thing and this distraction, they're just like, all right, you guys focus on our timber, focus on our timber, focus on our Furion. Slark's going to absolutely free farm the whole game. And there was like, it, was, it was just weird, because Aster also at one moment, they're all jungling. And they're like waiting for, I understand they're waiting for item timings, but they can't all be, they can't have three cores jungling it, nobody trying to make the plays. They have to be playing active in this, that stuff up. And they just fell behind to the point where Chaos, they had all three lanes pushing in constantly. 
And Aster, they had that one momentum bottom that they yeah. had going, and they TP'd and backed up and lost four heroes because of it. I mean, what, Aster, is some big names on this yeah. lineup, but those big names just didn't feel like they showed up today at all, either sort of individually or as a team. I mean, what, what, what's the problem with the guys today? I'm not sure, but they've got... They have a lot to work on. It, it looks like communication wasn't really there. Uh, their, their drafts were a little weird, but it just seems they seem really disconnected. They've got to really rethink sort of their approach to the game. And for Chaos Esports Club, the, the way that they came in with this approach today, both games with the draft and, and with the ideas, we are having these core heroes that just seem to be dominant. It it seemed so easy for the series. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this one, was, this one looked good. They busted out a core clockwork. None of their cores actually died. And it seemed like after like the early game, they had... Yeah. Core clock, core slot. You know, KLC Esports just showing that they can still bring stuff to the matter that not a lot of teams are going to be confident enough to do so. And they do it with a lot of dominance and a lot of strength. As they take this series 2-0. to zero. Back to you, Paul. Thanks very much, gents. Uh, great commentary as ever from Odipixel and from Fogged. We're going to break down the end of our final series and also uh, bring you right up to date with the results that have happened in both groups A and B. They've both played two rounds today, although Group B are still ongoing in the other two matches. Uh, just a quick update for you in that game. Ninjas in Pajamas some 15k ahead of Complexity and a game up in that one. Fnatic also a game up and ahead in the other game against the Lions up by 16k gold in that one. Both of those are still alive. Uh, we're going to wrap things up, gents. Um, we've got Blitz and we've got Purge um, back on the panel. I, I'm i so disappointed in a way for Asta, but also with Asta as well. They, this is a really good team, Kevin. This is good players. These are players that have had moments of great...